Okay, let's have a look at how to create a piecewise function with a quadratic. Okay, uh, like we were looking um, with the, the previous question here, um, when we did this with just a linear term, we just wanted to know where the linear term was positive. Well, we want to know the same thing here, but we're going to use a little trick here. What I'm going to do to start off with here, I'm just going to set this equal to zero. Okay, that's really where my focus is going to be, and I'll, I'll show you why in just a second. So this is going to take me just a couple seconds here. I got a we got to factor this. So 2x and x. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get uh, the 30 there, add to get the negative 7, but I'm going to just guess and check at this. You guys can factor this however you need. Um, if I make this negative 5 and plus 3, I'm, that's going to be negative 10 plus 3 gives me the negative 7. And so x is equal to negative 3 halves or positive 5. Okay, now that's Again, that's me just being a little quick with this. I know some of you are taking a little bit more time to factor, and that's okay. But the issue is here, the first thing i got to do is figure out where this goes to zero. Now, I know, if I was to look at the number line here, I know that this is a quadratic, sorry, if you, if you just ignore the absolute value signs for just a second, that that's a quadratic that open, excuse me, opens up. So it does this. Okay, now anything here above is positive, anything here is below is negative. So, my absolute value, if I write this as a piecewise function, okay, now remember the absolute, values does, the absolute value does one of two things. It either leaves the function alone if it's positive or it puts a negative sign in front if it's negative. So, this thing right here is going to be left alone when the function is positive. Well, when is the function positive? Well, it's, it's positive basically in this section and this section right here. It dips below in between the two roots, but it's positive up here. So it's positive when the x coordinate, okay, when the x value is here, because remember, three half, negative 3 halves is an x value, when x is less than or equal to, because I'm going to include the zero here, when it's either less than or equal to negative 3 halves, or x is greater than or equal to 5. In those intervals right there, the function shoots up above the x-axis. And it's positive, so the absolute value won't do anything to it. Now, the only other thing that the absolute value can do is throw a negative sign in front. And so that's just what we're going to do. We're just going to throw a negative sign in front of it. Okay, I'm not even going to multiply it through for right now. Just, for, just to really, for simplicity's sake here, just to express this out, there's going to be a negative in front. That's going to occur when the function is negative and the function is negative it dips below the x-axis in between these two roots it drops below here and then it goes above on the other side of five here so what's going to happen here is as long as we are between negative three halves and five okay then the absolute value is going to change the function and so this is what the piecewise part of that would look like now you're going to see this pattern show up over and over and over again okay Okay, we leave it unchanged. If the function open, basically this is what happens here. If the function opens up, then we don't need to change it outside the two roots. It simply needs to be changed in between the two roots. Okay? If the function opens up. 